Set the command. Part two. Part two. Hello, everybody. Welcome back for the Sum Up Come Down Part 2, a special Wednesday night episode. A mid-season review of uh, everything that we have done this season. A chronicle, if you will, of uh, my orgasm journey thus far. I'm going to tell you uh, what the guests uh, gave me as their assignments, how those assignments went for me. Obviously, if you want to listen to those assignments more in depth, go back and listen to the episodes, uh, especially if you're not coming. Um, so since I already came, I kind of wanted to, A, work on how to do that with another person. I know communication was a big thing. So you'll see one of those, the episodes uh, is specifically based on communication in this uh, group. Uh, also things like religion, because like I feel like religion really impacts how you view sex and sexuality. Um, a lot of people had been talking about sex parties, so that was something I was curious about. Uh, so yeah, episode seven, uh, I went to a sex party, an NSFW party, with my friend Betsy Carroll, and uh, we interviewed Melissa Vitale, who's the PR rep for NSFW, and she must be doing a fucking amazing job, because besides the fact that it's an amazing uh, sex wellness club, um, it's like Raya for sex clubs, um, they're like the number one search on Google now for NSFW, so they trump um, not suitable for work, that little acronym. Now it's the new Society for Wellness. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then, so yeah, so episode seven, we kind of recap the night. Um, but we got into a lot of really interesting conversations. Uh, Betsy Carroll just made a lot of really great points in that episode, besides talking about the sex party, which we do get to. And you should listen to the full episode if you want to hear about the sex party. Uh, this is just something that she said uh, that I thought was really important. Um, and yeah, here, take a listen. Implicitly, the patriarchy understands how important the female like orgasm is to empowerment. That's why that's really what the issue is with abortion and birth control. Like, yeah, let's make oh, it difficult absolutely. for women to like have a free sex life because mm -hmm. that's a way to like control them and keep them from their identity. That's why female circumcision happens in like cultures that are all about suppressing women. They're like, OK, if we take away this like very like fundamental like human right. There are a few things that drive us like to eat and to procreate and like not die. Th that's the whole point of it. So like the sex drive Just, is like, strong. Feel good. Yeah. So if you have if, if, if in that in some way that's like taken away from you because, for instance, you don't like feel motivated by the potential of an orgasm that's taking away a lot, it's taking away like kind of the meaning of life. Yeah, I really like that point because. I always felt like I depended on a, a dude for orgasms and it's just it's nice to take the pressure a off of another person but just like have the power in your hands to like be able to jack off whenever you want. Here's another uh, point that Betsy made that I thought was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh here's one feminist topic about the period. Imagine if guys had period periods like there are urinals. Urinals are a machine that's made just so a guy can pee in it like standing up like you yeah. could do that in a toilet. Imagine if guys had periods, there would be like tampon inserting machines. Like every bathroom would have tampons. Yeah. That's the truth. Like, I can't believe it that we don't have the way we have toilet paper. There should be tampons. Yeah. That's crazy that I there's not. That. Girls no, have to true. go through the indignity of carrying tampons around. Imagine and if we had to carry around so toilet paper. Hard. I'm sure that if My guys God. didn't, you know how guys like they just shake their dick. They don't like wipe their dick. Yeah. I bet if guys didn't wipe their ass, like we wouldn't even have toilet paper and women would. I'll carry around toilet paper. Oh my god! In their purses. Sure. Like, yeah. That's what. That's how crazy it is that we carry around tampons. Yeah. It. We shouldn't. Do you agree or disagree? I really like honestly. When she said the part about shaking their dicks and not wiping their ass, I was like, holy shit! We actually might have to carry around toilet paper if like men didn't have a shithole. Um. <laughs> this was a cool thing that uh, Melissa explained. Um, it's called enthusiastic consent. Um, which you might think is an obvious thing, but uh. It's the opposite of implied consent, which I will let her explain to you. It's turning the method off of um, implied consent, which is essentially going until you hear a no. Yeah. Right, right. To only going once you hear a well, yes. And how, again, when we when we go, when we focus on implied consent, which is, um, you know, go until they you say hear the stop. word no, yeah. you're not focusing on pleasure, you're focusing on an act of you know which doesn't always how much can i do to this oh, person yeah it doesn't until, always lead to pleasure on yeah. like both parties end and that's like where all of our problems start so right because it's also just sort of by even just doing that as like 
by having that be your paradigm, it's about me like guessing all the different things I could do. And then you telling me what are the things I can't do. It's not you telling me what you should do. What, what I want what you to do. Good, yeah. What I yeah. want, what is pleasurable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, we were talking about enthusiastic consent because that's basically what they practice at NSFW events. But it's what everyone should practice because um, it's like, yeah, do this to me instead of like, oh, all right, I guess I'll let you. Um, we talk a lot more about the event, like I said, uh, but this is one part that I thought was <laughs> great for Melissa just about um, apparel. And like, especially for the bigger play events, we recommend that members bring like like a robe something afterwards because kind of afterwards, like you don't want to get dressed after again. a really good orgasm. Yeah. There is nothing better than like some people will call it like is it a cigarette, a joint. I'm a spliff gown myself. Like everyone kind of like walk, we'll walk around outside and like we'll just be like in like kind of everyone has like different stages of like their post glow. Like some sometimes you'll see like three people come out of a room like all like all like wind swept and you're like. Welcome, like welcome back, friends. Yeah. Like welcome back to the to the to the real world. <laughs> Ooh, really makes you wonder what happens at those parties, right? You should listen to episode seven if you want to know what our experience was like. Um, okay, and then we talk about apparel a little more. This was specifically about lingerie, and then Betsy makes the best point. Ever. I'm obsessed with this point. Please open up your ear holes and then send this clip to your friends or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or anyone who is having sex. Um, I, I just love this point. Right. That time is crucial. <laughs> well, that's interesting also that you say that about the lingerie and that's the same guy who tries to rush going in because like I've told Remy I've been learning a lot about like Tantra and the yeah. one of the main ideas is that you bring it's like a like sexual and like the energy involved is like an actual like soul energy that's a physical force and like any other form of physical energy and physics and it has like the law of conservation of energy as part of it so like basically the energy that you put into like getting ready to like make love is what you like bring to the other person so like if you put in that effort of like putting on lingerie if that's what makes you feel beautiful you're actually like bringing in work to the sex like already and if that goes unappreciated it's like kind of like having like momentum built up and then somebody just like stopping it you know what i mean like the person needs to appreciate it and they need to like put in the work and put in the respect for it you know what i mean yeah can you send me like a recording of that and i'm going to like <laughs> when someone doesn't do foreplay on me i'm gonna, like, I'm gonna be like i'm not even gonna explain they're this fucking to you. it up someone else it actually this to you. no it, yeah. it made a lot more sense to me reading that because i'm like a science person and like i don't know it's just like this book that i read it was like it kind of said also like even in terms of if you're a couple if you move in together you take away a lot of the tantric energy automatically because the energy that you needed to do before as a couple to make love, part of it was like your commute. Mm -hmm. And now like that's gone. Whoa, you ever think of that? Isn't that crazy? I think that that is an amazing point. Like literally, there's nothing more frustrating than when you make an effort and then somebody doesn't appreciate it or see, like it just deflates everything. Or if you tr like try to fuck someone and they're just like, I'm tired, even that, oh man, what an ego bust. <sighs> just sucks. Uh, and here's a final point from Betsy, um, that I just, I really wanted you guys to hear one more time. So there's a real like goddess energy in every woman. Um, oh, I that, believe that. yeah. And so like when you ha like have your sexual, like tantric energy, it's not really about like sexuality. Tantra is really just about like kindness and like love and like, and so basically when a woman has an orgasm, she actually is like creating more of that tantric energy. But when a guy has one, they're just like getting rid of it all. Like, that's why guys get tired and mm -hmm. introverted and, like, boring and lazy after yeah. they come. And women and generally, like, energized. can go again, want to hang out more, want to talk. Uh, so it makes sense. Like, I feel like most women that I know or most women that have come on this show are able to have multiple orgasms. So the point to drive home is just, like, get the woman off as many times as possible because she'll keep getting more energized and energized and energized and energized and then have your orgasm. You know? Just ah then everyone's happy and then we don't sleep next to you angry and want to stab you i'm not saying i want to do that with my current boyfriend but past boyfriends oh boy i wanted to stab them um uh also uh i still accepted assignments because i figured like i've done it with a toy but i'd like to try and do it manually i'd like to try to do it other ways uh maybe with a person so i accepted an assignment from melissa and that was to masturbate with the chakra bin and the womanizer and i loved that that was a great assignment 
Um, that's all I'll say about that. You can hear more about it in episode eight, uh, in which I interview Polly Rodriguez. Cause I was thinking about, I was like, Oh, if this shock robe is like really fun, um, maybe there are other toys out there that maybe if they can't help me, they could help other people. Um, and there's just so much more to learn. So I interviewed the CEO of unbound, uh, which is a sex toy company and sexual wellness company. So she brought in a bunch of sex toys and explained them to the listeners. Um, you guys can go back and listen to episode eight if you want to hear all about those things or check out their website. Polly and I had one of the funniest conversations ever. One of the conversations was a debate on the movie The Shape of Water and whether we think that was bestiality and whether bestiality is okay. Um, you should definitely listen to the episode if you would like to hear that. Um, Polly also brought up some really important points that I just want you guys to hear because... Uh, they are more relevant than ever. Oh my god! Beautiful. Can we talk about STDs in America? It's a really Debbie Downer topic, but it's like a very, I mean, necessary topic to there, talk about. Do you know that there's? Do you know there's like a rancid throat gonorrhea right now? No. Yeah. It like you ca- like it's antibiotic resistant. Oh, As, well, because with a condom antibiotics maybe. have become so it's it's evolution, it's nature, but like now there, there are some STDs that are becoming antibiotic resistant. Mm. Which is kind of terrifying. Yeah, that's very bad. Yeah, that's true. Um, There is still a gonorrhea outbreak going on. I know that episode eight was recorded a while ago, but I literally just got back from L.A. and there are massive gonorrhea signs or (laughs) there are massive billboards on the side of the highway that says untreatable or antibiotic resistant gonorrhea strain going around. So if you're like hooking up with randos that you don't know if they have any diseases, um, cover yourselves up. Wear condoms or mouth condoms. Um. Yeah, try to keep up, try to keep safe. Um, Here is another thing that Polly and I were talking about. It, um, it's more of an ethical dilemma, um, but I I thought it was really interesting and valid. Uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So please write us in after you hear this next point. There's a really interesting study. The Economist did an article on this. Just quoting, just name dropping a publication yeah. so you guys think I'm smart. Um, but it was about pedophilia in the UK, and mm-hmm. they had a hotline for pedophiles that they could call mm-hmm. so that they wouldn't act out and actually like abduct a kid or act mm-hmm. upon a kid. And um, it it this the study showed that it was like Beneficial? insanely effective. Okay. Because I was talking about... But public, um, but the public found out about it, and they were like, we can't have this. This is saying that pedophilia is okay. And it's like, to me, it's like, it's not about whether or not it's right or wrong. It's about, like, ultimately, if we can make more open channels that aren't hurting people, mm-hmm. prevent people from getting hurt, like, yeah. why wouldn't we want to do that? Yeah, I always think that that's like... um a tough one with like I, we are talked about earlier episodes child pornography like they can make fake child pornography um so that people don't have to watch real stuff but then are you creating a market um i don't know it just gets into a very um confusing argument because you're keeping real kids safe but also you're making it more acceptable i don't know um next thing but yeah okay true story i got a kegel like uh something it wasn't it had silicone on it and it had like a handle and i like like i read the instructions and i was like it was like yeah you can put it in like you can watch tv go to the gym run Mm -hmm. errands so i was like okay i'm gonna give this a try because we try everything before we sell it yeah and i put it in and i was like okay i'm gonna try to like walk to the gym i made it a half block and i was wearing lululemon pants and I had a fucking Kegel ball hanging out of my butt. And it looked oh like I... Because you didn't realize you had to keep it like, up there? Also, I had... Like, I just physically could not. Yeah. Because I had well, those squeezed are little. enough. Yeah. But this thing was, like, massive. And <laughs> it was the summer. And I had Lululemon pants on. And it literally looked like I had shit my pants. <laughs> and amazing. I had to walk, like, two blocks before I could find a Starbucks to go into the bathroom to, like, pull it out. But meanwhile, I'm just, like, walking with what looks like a turd in my... In her pants. I cut her off. Um, but yeah, that episode is really fucking funny. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, this next one was inspired by, so the week before, you know how Betsy said so many interesting things. One of those interesting things was how similar she said laughing is to, um, having orgasms, which is like, as she said, and I I didn't include the clip, but just trust me, she did say this. Um, it's like making somebody lose control. And that's why guys are so obsessed with making women laugh. Yeah. 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 So I thought back to this article that my friend sent me when I first started doing comedy called 
why men don't like funny women. And essentially, it's just like about how in evolution, women had to be the ones finding a smart guy, um, somebody who was going to stick around because we're the ones having the babies. um, And a way to judge intelligence is by how funny you are. Um, And so guys got progressively more funny to prove that they were smart and worthy and wanted to bang chicks. And women um, started to find uh, humor attractive. And Um, so I was thinking about that and I was like, oh, who would know humor and sex the best? So I invited Dan Soder and Mark Normand on, um, cause they're both very successful, very hot male comedians who get a lot of tail when they want it. Um, and yeah, we talked about, uh, making women orgasm and making women laugh and the similarities and the differences. And, uh, I, I really think that they're tied to each other because like, I've never laughed more heartily than this year. Um, and that, I think that's cause I'm coming so hard or maybe I just have fun of your friends now I don't know um okay so here's some clips from episode nine that I thought were great but again yeah listen to the whole episode because th- this one is fucking hilarious um if you want to hear about how Mark and Dan have sex if you want to hear how to have sex like Dan and Mark if you want to hear what having sex with Dan and Mark is like um yeah do do this listen to this yeah, yeah. I, do the, I do this the suck uh lap like the, like, what? The, like like the lick and then into the suck. Oh, to get the saliva yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a good move. Yeah, it's a good move. How old are you? Thirty four. See, that's you know. Things. I've been eating pussy since I was about fifteen years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First time I went face to face with a vagina, I was a young man. And? Uh, oh no, it was. Oh, that <laughs> was terrifying the first time. You're yeah, like, first Whoa. time. First time you get down there, it's real face to face, and you're like, Yeah. All right, we are here. Yep. Because I think a penis, I don't know, I've never sucked a dick, but I, I'm guessing a I penis. I was terrified. But if, all right, because it's coming at it's you. At you. Yeah. yeah. Right. And the, the pussy, cool. it was like Predator when he takes his mask off, where it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and you're right. like, what the hell are you? <laughs> and there's so many flaps and folds, yeah. it's all wet. Sometimes there's hair, there's a new odd smell you're taking in. Yeah, yeah. and then you don't, you don't get, you don't learn about, oh, you know, pulling up the hood and getting to the clit until you're 18. Or 28, like me. LOL. Um, but yeah, so do it into the suck. Yeah, the lick into the suck. Um, while we were talking about the lick into the suck and then like some other stuff, um, something really hilarious happened. I will let you take a small listen and then if you want to hear the full story, you can obviously go back to the episode. I feel like this episode has just been a promo for the ep- episodes, but these episodes really are like chock full of great shit. So I don't know. I really did pick you my favorite parts too. So I, I, I feel like I'm giving you I'm giving you good stuff, but again I'm not giving you all of the stuff. These episodes are full of amazing stuff, uh, but yeah here's here's one thing that happened. Huh. Crazy, but like uh, crazy. you know the the crazy um, Christian preachers were like it's the devil. So oh my God, Manny's here. Oh no, you guys, we're gonna take a short break and say hello to my grandma. All right, let's ask her some right. come questions. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you got to explain that to the listeners. Yeah. I'm shook it. Ooh, isn't that a big tease for that episode? Don't you just want to go listen to it now? Uh, no, don't. Keep listening to this one because um, we've got some more hits coming your way. Uh, here was one of another one of my favorite clips. Uh, I uh, I have such a problem if a girl can't come. I take oh, it, really? I take it so personally. It's like bombing. Yeah, it really, dude, it really is. It's same I, shit. The last girl I hooked up with I couldn't come. And really? I, yeah. tried, I tried to the point where I was like, last time I had sex, where I was like, that's, I mean, that's, I just, I, I don't have the physical stamina. Did you cry? No, but I was just like, <laughs> I, I didn't like it. I was like, ah, oh, man. You're yeah. just laying in bed next to her like, fuck. Yeah. What do I have to do? You're sweating. You got like, you know, a headband on. <laughs> yeah, you're like legitimately, your core is exhausted. Yes, yeah, and your tongue hurts. See, it's literally exactly what Betsy said. It was like bombing in the bedroom is just like bombing on stage or like guys want to make women laugh. They want to make women come. It's very similar. Um, it's total. I was totally mm, good point, Betsy. But yeah, they want to make us laugh and they want to make us come. And actually that article that said that uh, men aren't attracted to funny women exempts funny men or intelligent men because those people are funny enough or smart enough not to be in 
intimidated by funny women. Um, and yeah, they, they like that. I think Dan Soder is about to say that in this next clip. Let's see. I'll tell you this. The, yeah. the, the, the ex-girlfriends that I miss the most are the funniest ones. Yeah, they're funny. Because I miss yeah. the ones where you're like, oh, man, there's nothing better than being naked and funny with someone. Yes. You're just like laying in bed with mm-hmm. someone and you're like just being silly or stupid or just make each other laugh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's just important to uh, have a sense of humor. I think it's a must have. Yeah. Like yeah. I couldn't date somebody with jokes just going, going over a head. Ah, that happened. All that stuff. That is brutal. Have you done that? Have you dated someone like that? Shit. And then you have that moment where you're like, you're not getting anything I'm saying, are you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and you're, you're like, like Huh? And you're like, wow. Exactly. What is that? That to me is the biggest turnoff. Just like you just say all this stuff and she's like, uh huh. And you're like, none of that sunk in at all. None of that. Oh, it's like I queued up all of these clips myself. Uh, What else did I put on the lineup, Remy? I don't know. We'll see. What would you be more offended by? Someone fake laughing at your jokes or someone faking an orgasm? Fake uh, laughing at my jokes. Yeah. I'd, I'd yeah. be appalled. Fake, yeah. orgasm. Uh, fake orgasm, whatever. There's Sometimes you need to get done or you want to go to bed. I get it. She's trying to help at least. Yeah. You know, like, ah. Uh, fake orgasm is still with. a polite thing. Is it polite? Sometimes. I feel like it's a liar. I, I dated a girl for a while. She's like, I will never fake an orgasm. And <laughs> that's I, was, how I, I, I feel. I kind of respected that. I, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That was like her a, stance. She's like a three musketeer. <laughs> she's like, I hate yeah. blacks and Jews, uh, uh, but I will never fake an uh, orgasm. I will never fake an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's polite? Do you think it's like a nice thing to uh, fake an orgasm? Or do you think it's like misleading eventually? I don't know. I, th- I think it's a liar. Uh, like I said, I think it, it can. It's, it's the anti-communication. You're lying. Like, how are you supposed to make the other person better? Like, and how are you supposed to not be sexually frustrated and pissed at them at the end? I don't know. So then we got on the subject of chuckle fuckers, which is... Um, a specific it's kind of like a comedy groupie um and i was asking about you know hooking up with girls in the audience and stuff this is one of my favorite points that mark made about how stand-up helps you hook up with audience members you know when you think about it from a guy's standpoint that's like the perfect recipe for a one-night stand the process from getting a girl's number to actually putting a penis inside (laughs) of her body is a long pro and a lot Mm -hmm. of steps if you want to do it legally and consensually and so that just cuts it all down to like 10 minutes yeah, because then you think that you know them, but they don't know you. Ooh. So even if you're listening to this podcast and you're like, oh, my God, Mark and Dan are so ideal. Like, we're going to hook up. Like, just remember, they don't know you. They will, maybe, but they don't right now. Uh, yeah, so we talk about hooking up with fans versus hooking up with girlfriends. Here's um something that another thing that Mark said that I liked. It's going well. But I'm turned on by the stranger aspect. Oh. Like, this is just purely mm. See, objectifying, yeah. sexual, primal. There's no, like, feelings. With those people, though, do you care if they come? I, yeah, I still want to please them. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's You're just my own ego. People. No, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, I didn't care if I was never going to see the girl again. I would, yeah. Still got to kill. Still Bar- got to yeah. murder. Bury yeah. my face. Yeah. <laughs> if I like a bury girl, my yeah, I'll just <laughs> bury my face. Uh, but it really is like. But I care for me. It, it matters more if I like the person. Like if I if I'm really yeah. yeah. But that's sure. definitely removing alcohol because when yeah. I drank, I would just I still wanted everyone to come, but I was just like, "What's up?" So gals, know this: if uh, you hook up with a stand up, it will be easy for them to hook up with you because you've already learned a lot about them. But also, they're gonna want to make you come because they are very insecure, um, or they just want to do a good job. You should hook up with a stand-up because uh, we don't want to bomb. We, d- we just want applause all the time, all the time. Give us applause. Um, one final thought from Dan Soder and Mark Normand. Got it. Um, question for you. Would you rather laugh for the rest of your life and not be able to come <laughs> or come for the rest of your life and not be able to laugh? Well, I mean, I'd laugh and not come. Amazing. Easy. I don't Same. think that's like yeah. cool. I don't know. Let's I can still get hard, right? I can still oh, do, totally. I can and still, still feels do the job. Good. Yeah. It still feels good. Yeah. Laugh st- all day. Do I still have an orgasm and nothing comes out? No. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, I'll still take it. I'll okay. take laughing. I'll still take laughing. Yeah, and sex itself is like still pretty fun. Oh, like, yeah. Fool hey, around. Hey, you get great God. stamina. Are you kidding me? Be the talk of the town. Right. Like, you've been dicked down by this dude? He doesn't <laughs> have an off switch. Exactly. Yeah. Hooray. So, yeah, I, I think the moral of that episode is... Laughing is amazing. Sex is like laughing. Um, And also, if you are not coming, you can still enjoy your life. 
Because even people who come all the time would still pick laughter over coming. So, you know, listen to this podcast. Listen to Dan Soder and Mark Norman's podcasts. Um, Soder's is The Bonfire and Mark Norman's is Tuesdays with Stories. Um, All right. So then I moved on to episode 10. And episode 10 was about uh, communicating because I was just coming off the heels of really understanding these male comedians. My boyfriend is a male comedian. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask for what I want, but I can't do it in English yet because I'm still uncomfortable. Um, So I brought my friend Lisa in um, essentially to teach me how to say plus suck on my clit in French. And uh, she did. Uh, She teaches us a number of other French phrases. Um, Basically, you learn how to have sex in French on that episode. So if you want to learn how to fuck in French, um, go listen to episode 10 with Lisa Radizinski. Um, It's really fun. Um, And then I'm not going to put any of the lesson in this one because it's it's too short. Um, But here are some clips from Lisa that I really enjoyed uh, from that episode, if you don't get to hear it. (laughs) I used to think that song was so vulgar, and I love it. Uh Of course. Yeah. And this, the other song... Eeny weeny na 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 dream a little short dick man the one the one the one you don't know what the fuck no what is that really short dick (laughs) you don't no you don't know that song it's a very musical episode (laughs) no (laughs) I think I was like ten you were way younger I guess Uh, you know that song. Eeny weeny teeny weeny she, she wore an itsy bitsy teeny no, weeny yellow no. fucking a bikini no not at all the, no? the song I think it's called uh, short dick don't want a short dick man don't want don't want don't want no no I don't know it but it sounds great <laughs> it is <laughs> This um, is from the end of the episode. I don't know if you guys know this, but every episode of How Come has the theme song after we wrap up. And then like a Marvel movie, there's like an extra scene at the end. Like you ever go see superhero movies and then there's the extra scene that you have to stick around for. And only like the losers don't stick around for because they don't know that it's happening. Or maybe like the losers are the ones who are staying like whatever. Anyway, they we have all this bonus stuff. Um, And this was uh, Lisa's bonus footage, and I thought it was super interesting. Um, It is about the first time that she came. I was alone. I was on the phone with a guy Uh uh, that I've never met. Oh, my God. But I chatted with him for a (gasps) while. Well, so I met him on AOL Messenger. Duh. That's a very long time ago. Amazing. Um, We talked for a while, blah, 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 and I liked him. Yeah. And I guess he was older than me. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how old he was, but he was very handsome. I, rem- I remember the only photo of him I had, and mm-hmm. I still remember it. Oh, actually, maybe it's not even him. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> like, <laughs> you have one photo of him, you never uh, saw him. Yeah. You uh, probably got catfished. Probably. Then you came on the phone with him. I came on the phone with Were him. Were you fingering yourself? We, we, we were having... Uh, phone sex mm-hmm. and yes I was masturbating and so have I, you had sex before no oh cool crazy right she definitely got catfished by some old ass dude um poor Lisa I love her though um she's amazing uh so then this next episode was the Jewish episode like I said I just wanted to go into discovering like how religion uh impacts um sexuality and stuff so i had robbie hoffman and david yaris on robbie hoffman is from the chris gethard show um and david yaris started j swipe so we talked about judaism and love and relationships and how it affected their lives um robbie came from a really hasidic family and now is not in that culture uh david was various degrees of religious at different stages of his life so we all we go through all of that on the episode um and then here is a clip that i thought was really funny and good and you'll like we're gonna be honest yeah. today mm-hmm. the most well, appreciate powerful that. um connections that i've had almost entirely Mm -hmm. have only been with some people with people who were not jewish Mm -hmm. and is this men do you date men no okay yeah they're great people i'm sure yes they are okay because a jewish man like when you say date like uh, marry jewish i'm a i'm a lesbian jewish person would you like that's nullified if it's gay right is it like to your parent like let's say you're gay 
Let's say you're gay. <laughs> uh, a Jewish man does not help your parents out. Just oh, to right, 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 right. Why? Yeah, to clarify Jewish, for the listeners, you want to be married Jewish to a marriage. woman because then the children will be Jewish. Yes, but I, I think that my friends who are gay and Jewish probably have the same pressure. Oh, really? Right. Of marrying someone Jewish. Okay. Yeah. Because it's, you know, I feel like, I mean, I don't know, so I don't want to speak for mm-hmm. them, but I, I feel like they, at least some of the people that I've talked to, mm-hmm. have a similar pressure. Yeah. I think actually the Jewish religion, as far as religions go, is pretty good about gay. Okay. Um, even the more religious sects of it are starting to deal with it. Um, there are Orthodox gay rabbis, for instance. Really? Yeah, and uh, the conservative movement, I think, has is there. I think that gay, there are gay openly gay conservative practicing Jews Mm -hmm. as a lesbian uh, if I'm with another Jewish girl we can have double the Jewish babies yeah right if it counts on the mother yeah so then they go oh okay well that's good for the team yeah okay (laughs) two wombs can you be pregnant at the same we could (laughs) yeah okay now okay. We can talk. All right. Let's talk. This sounds, sounds good. good. <laughs> I like do you it. Know what I mean? yeah. But that's yeah. like literally like so they do ask that question. Yeah. So I like that bit about the two wombs. I thought that made sense. And uh, yeah, I I had always I had been curious about how accepting uh, Jews were of LGBT people because a lot of my friends were like, oh, I wish I was gay, and I was like, I actually don't know like what Jewish you know think. But apparently, yeah, they're flexible. Two wombs. Robbie came in with like a lot of really great insight and information and stories and personal info and all that stuff. Um, David didn't really touch on much personal stuff. Uh, he couldn't remember his first time coming, but he did ask me a lot of questions, which led me uh, to this next thing that I think I'm going to share with you just in this snippet, because these are my rules for dating. Um, just I, I, you can use them. I, they're not guaranteed, but I think I think they're good. Uh, here goes. I, I just I, I I'm being heteronormative as a queer person. And maybe that's bad, but I I don't think it's acceptable for men to forget chivalry. So I I, I agree 100 percent with chivalry. My question is maybe not on dating apps. I'm talking about like once you're on once you're already one or two chatting. Days. So you're not like you're already okay. like deep in relationships. Yeah, so yeah. take yourself back however long until like open like instead right. of dating. Well, right. I was always calculating how much blue is there versus how much gray. Okay. You never want to be the one sending an Not ocean. Right. Uh, like concept. just blur you your eyes about. if you see more blue. Uh, that's not good. Yeah. Uh. Um, also, if you're sending them more memes, that's not good because uh, it means you're thinking about things that are important to them and they're not thinking about things that are important to you. But uh, timing, like do you, timing. Do you wait to respond or just respond? So you I played the game. Ah, oh, this kills no, me. No, 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 wait, no. I disagree. I disagree with Robbie, and no. here's why. Because I. I made this little dating manifesto actually and I wrote it like four years ago when I had just gotten out of a relationship so I thought I was guru on relationships and like you know when you just get out that you think like everybody wants to date me now and I have I have the secret um the secret was I was still dating like I had a boyfriend and that's why people were attracted to me because it was this standoffish yet really chill vibe so I always tell people when you are trying to date somebody Date them like you have a boyfriend. If you have something to t- say and you want to do something with them or something reminded you of them, you have something to say, text them. Say it casually or whatever. But don't say it so sexy that if your boyfriend found it, he wouldn't like that because you don't ever want to be the one that's like, like, instead of, hey, wink so face, calculated. what are you doing? No, no. This is my Liter- favorite. Literally. You're not wrong. I don't think I'm wrong at all. No. Um, don't text them at 2 a.m. Your boyfriend's going to see that. He's going to be pissed. Or your girlfriend. Um, don't keep the conversations that you have with that person on your phone. Delete them. After each conversation, you delete the conversation? I think after <laughs> it's been like like three scrolls, wow. delete it. Be- and why? Because, and I'm a girl, so, so this is coming from me. You get fucking attached. Mm-hmm. You reread it and Smart. you start to think, this is something more. Even, even I'll go back and I'll look at tagged pictures of me and a guy or whatever. Untag them so you, you don't have them all in one place because that makes it seem like yep. there's a relationship when it doesn't really exist. Um, so, yeah, try and make the relationship not exist on the surface or anything or how you feel until it actually exists. And then give that person your all. First of all, I appreciate. Well, you should, like, 
publish this or share it. I was going to sell it to like, yeah, yeah thank it's you. like mm-hmm. excellent. Um, maybe like as a, like sort of an mm-hmm. addendum or a link on this, yeah. on this Ooh, podcast. And don't talk about it with any of your friends. I mean, like talk about it with only one really good friend. Like if you had a boyfriend and you wanted to cheat on your fucking boyfriend, you have one friend that you tell. Cause if you, the more you talk about it, the more real it is basically. I have a couple <laughs> more questions for you though. Mm-hmm. So response time. Whenever you're fucking free. Yeah. So he, told me to put it as an addendum so it's in this episode uh also i don't um don't talk to your friends too much maybe pick one friend that uh you want to chat with uh because like if you were cheating on your boyfriend or girlfriend like you probably confide in one person but not more than that um okay so then we also had a conversation on the jewish episode about this thing i learned about in birthright called the mikvah um and you can listen back to the episode if you want a whole explanation but essentially it's about um female hygiene and that got me thinking about female hygiene in general so i read this book um by mika hollander called get on top um and i brought in two friends uh emily lubin and andrea allen who are the hosts of the hot mess comedy hour And uh, we talked about how Andrea is super OCD clean and Emily is really dirty like me. And the fact that Andrea still gets like all the yeast infections and Emily never has. And I've never gotten a cavity, even though I never used to brush my teeth. And like, I still am not the best. And uh, yeah, so um, we talk about that stuff. And then uh, this episode is just hilarious. Like it's side splittingly funny. If you want abs, um, these girls have the best stories. Um, We also interviewed... Uh, Melanie Crystal, who is the CEO of a company called Laurels. Um, And Laurels are the first uh, latex panty specifically made for uh, giving women oral sex. This is what Emily had to say when we were on the phone with uh, Melanie. Do you make, um, what sizes do you make up to? Like, could I get a guy to wear this? Because I love to rim a dude. Whoa. That we want to do, like make a version for dudes. I think, like, having the protrusion of a penis wouldn't work with how Uh, mm -hmm. laurels are made currently. Um, But it's definitely something that we're thinking about for the future. Or maybe, like, some kind of version of it that would only cover the butt like r- like men, a jock like, strap maybe all the time. do you have hordes of dudes yeah. come out just like ready to test that <laughs> shit <laughs> it's for yeah. science I, I volunteer as tribute yeah. <laughs> yeah so many people are like i volunteer you know next round of testing <laughs> mm-hmm. i would i would rim i am I've done so many gross things sexually, but for some reason, rimming a man is like one of my lines. But Emily, no one's ever asked loves me either. It. She I just, just do it. dives love in it? there yeah, like a I love fucking it. Okay. ass monkey. What do you like about it the most? They come so hard, and it's unlike anything. It's it's unlike any other orgasm that I've ever seen out of a man because they have Are you jerking them off and rimming at the same time. I can't really do the reach around that effectively. They would like kind of jerk themselves off okay um or do nothing like how do you just lay back and enjoy are there faces on the pillow like is that you can i mean you can do it face down you could do it face up you could it's really a choose your own adventure but But if if they're if they're face up and your head is down there then what their penis is like resting on your head then (laughs) their then their (laughs) legs weird hats i actually i attach it to my ponytail Uh and do a little yankee motion (laughs) no i don't get quite so how do you initiate it yeah sometimes i'll throw a finger sometimes i'll just go for it the first time that you did it who was somebody asking for it or were you just like i gotta eat that ass there was something drawing me to the ass oh my god emily ah you did not expect that conversation to come out of a woman cunnilingus fucking underwear ceo (laughs) conversation yeah so that happened uh here is another hilarious clip from episode 12 we were talking about this the other night i actually matched with a guy on tinder who (laughs) who was like, honestly, three messages in, was very insistent on me pegging him. Mm -hmm. And I just like wasn't... You gotta do six. Six Yeah, for those of you who don't know what pegging is, by the way, it's wearing a strap on and fucking a guy up the butt. Yes. And and I have no... Well, I don't know. See, 
at the time, I wasn't, like, adventurous enough to entertain. It was also, like, why are you bringing this up so well, soon? Well, it's three messages. Yeah, you got like, to woo a girl. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> I have a loft in, in Bushwick. And also, please, fuck me in the ass. I'm like, this <laughs> is really... He wants <laughs> it too bad. He did want it too bad. He's messaging, you know, <laughs> half the girls on there. Sure, yeah. He has, like, please. he probably has this dialogue <laughs> that he just copy and paste. Peg me. <laughs> I'm begging you. I have a username, peg me 6969. I have a gorgeous loft in yeah. Williamsburg. <laughs> yeah, I... Peg the shit out of me and I'll let you live there for two years. If your name is Peg, extra points. (laughs) (laughs) He's married to a woman named Peg. Peg. (laughs) They're so funny. Honestly, listen to the episode. I've been saying that every six seconds, I think, on this podcast. But episode 12, one of my faves. Those girls have the best stories. Also, listen to their podcast, the Hot Mess Comedy Hour podcast. Um, They're fantastic. So after the hygiene episode, I really wanted to explore other things that we could educate people about. Um mainly myself um and i brought on my friends ian fidance and jess tom who are both part of the lgbtq spectrum on in one way or another um as ian says in the episode he is considers himself bisexual he has sex with trans women he has sex with cis women um he'll have sex with straight or gay men um jess is uh pansexual and non-binary um non-binary um Jess is pansexual and non-binary, as they say, Um, and so we touched on a lot of interesting topics um, from them, and uh, yeah, so here is the first one. I feel like the B in the LGBTQ community is very, uh, you know, kind of brushed over in a way, which Mm. is whatever. I've never felt a part of that because I held it inside for so long. You know, I've gotten a lot of pushback on it, specifically from the gay community which is oh, very funny yeah that what? sucks yeah, yeah that uh yeah. it's not a real thing yeah and that you you're, got, you you're just choose. straight gay you and pick. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah and uh also from the straight community i get a lot of latent homophobia in terms mm. of germophobia oh Ooh, yeah that makes because sense to me too the idea yeah. is that bisexual people spread disease more yeah. than straight people or gay people mm-hmm. so I I mean, you know, the the whole entire AIDS crisis was that uh, the reason why it started going to straight people is because of bisexuality. And but but I'm I'm saying that's that's a narrative that was pushed. Right, right, right. right. It doesn't Mm -hmm. make it a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna just like you know, uh, only gay people can get AIDS. Right, that's right. you know the narrative that was pushed. Yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's like. But I always think it's weird when people are like, pick. Oh yeah. It's like, but. Yeah, and it's not even care? it's not even pick, it's an assignment. Like, no, you're gay. Like that's mm. what you are. You Just say to. you're fucking gay. I'm like, well, I'm not gay, man. I don't even know what the fuck I am. I thought that was really interesting because um yeah, uh, you can be excluded from even communities that are excluded themselves. Um, so people just kind of need to be a little more inclusive and I think I think the world's going that way definitely. Um, but yeah, it sucks. Everybody can be mean to everyone. Um, here is another clip from episode 13. You know, she wants to be interested in my life, but she is confused about these things. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'll be like, oh, I had a date. And she's like, oh, Ian, is it a born girl or is it one of your friends? <laughs> it's like, that's such like a loving thing yeah. that I would be the asshole to be like, you know, mom, that's not a pro. You know right. what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. you know, I love you. Yeah. I, I get that you're trying, baby. And that's all that matters. You know, it's like intention based. Like, it's how you say things. Like, well, as long people, as it's, like, with love and trying to understand. That's what I, that's what I think it, it should be. But I feel like a lot of people say uh, impact is more important than intent. Oh. When you can't control the impact of what you say if your intentions are mm. pure. Mm. And someone takes it another way. What you do know? you think, Jess? I think I'm I'm an, an impact is mm-hmm. uh, takes precedent over intent in that like you know you can step on someone's foot by accident and it'll still hurt that per like that person still gets yeah, hurt yeah you yeah know? yeah for sure um, but that's not your intention to hurt them no you but you can't control that that happened if it was an accident certainly not certainly not and I agree with you mm-hmm. about that um, to could do it or you did it by accident but like for could I could I interject. Uh, I feel that this would be analogous. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a, uh, I'm an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict. I'm in recovery. I've been mm-hmm. sober. I've been in and out of uh, recovery programs, hospitals, institutions since 2008. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
I um, am offered drugs and alcohol all of the time. Yeah. And drugs and alcohol destroyed my life. Right. I've been in terrible situations. I should be dead for where they led me. Mm -hmm. Very traumatic. Mm. So when someone offers me alcohol or drugs, yeah. they aren't aware of my life. Mm -hmm. They aren't aware. Even some friends of mine know and they're like, oh, I forgot. Yeah. But they're, people aren't aware. And in a way, they're offering me a communal thing as an olive branch of hey, do you want this? Yeah. Hey, do you, oh, you're going to get your drink, you know, and it's not an intentional thing to hurt me. Mm -hmm. So if I were to get mad at them and hold that against them, would that be analogous to- Oh my to God, you would hate me. The amount of times I've tried to smoke you exactly. out. Exactly. So then what gives you the right to get upset at someone when they don't know your yeah. specific yeah. name or situation? Because it's truly not the other person's job to know your life. I agree. And it's it's not anybody's job to know anything about your life, mm -hmm. like especially if they haven't had resources to like learn. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I totally agree with that. I'm also just like you know, it's not really about what gives you right to get upset. It's that people just are gonna have their feelings. You know what I mean? Sure. Like things it's how are gonna you make deal them. with it. It's like I am upset now. Uh, what do you do or whatever? It's like I either say sorry and I learn from my, or try and learn or like. I don't but say I think, sorry, and then you're a fucking asshole. But I right. think it's yeah. on the other person, too, to learn that not everyone is going to be so socially aware mm. and to internalize that in a way because I, I've i known people that, like, if you're like, oh, hey, do you want to drink? They're like, I'm an alcohol. How dare you? And it's like, <laughs> well, hey, man, I, I'm I sorry. Know. Yeah. You know, fuck me for trying to include, you yeah. know. And, and I understand the, the trauma and the hurt, but to blow back and then hurt someone else because of how you were slighted, I can't get down with that in any regard, whether yeah. it has to do with pronouns, gender, uh, uh, trauma, or whatever, unless you are if, a, if fucking, you're a fucking asshole about it. Yeah, like, no, some people get are fucked, like fucking dude. Like if somebody fucked with your fucking pronouns on purpose, yeah. I would fucking knock them out. Yeah. Like, you're a fucking piece of garbage, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know? And no. I, I just met you like i want to fucking <laughs> well, thank you yeah i want to fight for you jess <laughs> thank you well I'll... that's why i wear these rings <laughs> <laughs> i love that conversation obviously there's a lot more in the episode but i felt like it was really cool um having two people who uh are both affected um who both can come to this conversation from a place of knowledge and a place of empathy and a place of reason and a place of humor um again they're both comics um so it's a a great conversation, a funny conversation, and an enlightening conversation, and a very educational conversation. If you don't know any of the words that were just mentioned, um, take a listen. Um, our last episode that I'm going to be recapping, um, 7 through 14, is episode 14. Um, and this one was about love. I had Di Guerra and uh, Yasmin Gomez on. They're both Instagram poets. Uh, to talk about the correlation of love and orgasms. Is there a correlation? Do you need to be in love to have an orgasm? Um, we talk about love and how relationships shape our feelings about ourselves, um, how early relationships, even familiar relationships, shape our feelings about ourselves. Um, so here is a clip of Yasmin Gomez uh, from episode 14 uh, where she talks about that. A time I stood with my dad when I was three till I was like eight years old I would say mm -hmm. so in that period of time my mom did come to visit like she yeah. came at least twice a year and made sure that she came she you know checked she, in on you exactly yeah. brought me clothes everything I needed my mom would send me money and make sure that I was fine but I grew up with my dad and my dad wasn't the greatest you know at that time he was very physically abusive and you know in Dominican Republic that's very normal right. it's very normal for me you know for fathers to you know, um, be physically abusive right. to their daughters. Because that's how they've seen exactly. other people act. But at the time, I blamed myself. I thought that something was wrong with me. Right. I actually felt that whatever anger he had towards my mother uh -huh. for her leaving him, because he was very much in love with my mother. It was. Did they have a good relationship? I they know didn't. They didn't. They didn't. No. It, they were basically an arranged marriage. That was pretty mm. normal. Back in those days, they were arranged to get married. My mom was 15 years old. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think my dad is about 
almost 10 years older than her. That's so a big difference. So he must have been in his early yeah. 20s and she was 15. That is a big difference. Yeah. So At that time, yeah. Yeah. You know. My mom says she was still playing with Barbies. When oh, my God. Yeah, depending on the yeah. age of your merch. Some girls don't even get their tits until they're like 16. Like, yeah, well, I don't know how many tits, how much tits she had, but... <laughs> <laughs> Did but I mom have tits not, when she was I don't know. <laughs> I would have to ask her that. So I'm not sure don't how ask big her tits that. were. But that's, if that's <laughs> what you take from this conversation, I got to go home and ask my mom, do you have tits when oh. you got married? I know for a fact she got her period because I obviously got, she obviously got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and me so she must have later. had tits oh she God. definitely had so tits. she must have had tits yeah yeah so we talk about a lot of stuff in that clip um and yeah we unpack some of the abuse stuff and being married at 15 oh my god um we also obviously talk about danae and yaz's first time uh danae is a good one so here is that clip for you right now what about you your first time coming uh, um <laughs> okay well this is gonna get very personal i actually i was probably about eight or nine Okay. I was young. Um, but I also got my period at eight. I was, I, oh, shit. Like, I was eight. Um, that must have been terrifying. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, what was Did you happening? think you shit your pants? No. <laughs> I, it was a whole, it's a, it, I, I just ended up getting it. And my mom threw, like, a whole first period party. Oh, really? <laughs> and bought me a, uh, yeah, and bought me a, a red tank top and oh uh, my god that's so cute i was like what are you doing um however <laughs> actually i had a friend and um she, i guess she had masturbated before me uh -huh. and she told me about this great thing that she had done yeah i should check it out <laughs> and i was like what are you talking about and um and then one day i was by myself and i took my friend's advice You're like i'm gonna try that cool thing i learned <laughs> after i did it I can remember very uh, inappropriate places that I started touching myself in. <laughs> I remember I was in my grade five classroom. Yeah. <laughs> I was going at it mm -hmm. over my pants. Over yeah, my yeah, pants. Yeah. Not, my hands were not in my pants. But were you finishing? Um, I don't I don't think I think the when I was alone, yes. Yeah. But okay. in the inappropriate places I don't think I was, was finishing. <laughs> Perv. Honestly, I feel like every kid has masturbated in public at some point like by accident like they don't know what they're doing they're just having a good time uh here's the last clip i'm going to share with you it is a very important point and if you ever have seen me do stand up you know this joke i oh, i never wanted to do this as a comic but i kind of just said it um out of habit uh i, I tell a joke about oxytocin but this is a real fact oh okay i want to go home now yeah like, oh, it's not a me. good feeling also i uh i was reading this the other day um there's a hormone that's released in women i mean it's released in men and women but um estrogen makes it str mm -hmm. much stronger in women called oxytocin it's a bonding hormone mm -hmm. uh that's released when we have sex so one of my background i'm also a nurse besides being a okay, writer yeah so oxytocin also is the hormone that is released when you fall in love yeah oh, wow. so that's the reason why when you fall in love with a person and you're with them and you're intimate with them you release oxytocin mm -hmm. and actually has been proving that the levels of oxytocin is actually higher when you're actually having sex with someone you're in love with. Yeah. So and, what happens? And it increases your orgasm too. Yes, higher it does. Levels of oxytocin. Yeah. So then what happens? My this is my theory. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a nurse. But I'm this is my theory that if you're having these releases of oxytocin when you're coming with somebody you're in love with, when you have sex out of love, mm -hmm. that hormone is also being released because yeah. you're having an orgasm yeah so that's why it's very easy for women to confuse a sexual you know sexual encounter, encounter yeah, with being the in real love thing. Yeah. or you just actually like the guy more after you actually have sex with him okay so that's the main takeaway and here's why it's because a i just want girls to know like if you are having sex with a guy and you were like super in love with him and you're like i don't know why that's why um, we produce more oxytocin while we're having sex with them than they do with us. Um, it just pumps out and then we just think we're in love with them. Um, so if a girl is taking a long time to have sex before or like she's trying to get to know you before she has sex with you, it's because she's like, I don't want to accidentally fall in love with you. Um, so it's totally cool to take your time. Um, it kind of actually makes sense now on an evolutionary level why women should take their time because like we can just fall in love with all these losers by accident. Um but yeah, um, at the end of that episode, too, um, 
I just want to share this with everyone. I think we settled on the fact that you don't have to be in love to have an orgasm. Yes, orgasms will increase if you are in love because, like we said, the oxytocin pumps a little harder. But um, a lot of people can have orgasms before they're in relationships. You don't need to value yourself depending on whether you have a relationship or not. And that's something that I did really early in my life and especially in my sexual life. If I was masturbating, it was probably because I had been denied that night. Um, and, and it became this thing that was kind of like shameful. It was like, oh, you've been rejected and that's why you're masturbating. No, masturbating does it has, it has nothing to do with a crush. It has nothing to do with love. The only love it has to do with is self-love. So make love to yourself, as cheesy as that sounds. But seriously, grab your own butt. Grab your tits. Grab your balls. Gra- like, look at yourself in the mirror. Say nice things to yourself. This has nothing to do with another person. This has to do with you. Do it for yourself. Um, you guys, this has been the Sum Up Come Down Part 2. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know that I enjoyed reliving all those episodes. We'll be back with a brand new episode um, on Sunday. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, I came with my boyfriend. Um, I don't know when it happened along the way, but it did. I didn't feel like sharing it at the time. Um, so, yeah, it happened. It was, it, it was great. Um, but... Uh, I'm going to obviously keep going, but now I think my personal um, assignment journey is going to be over. So the podcast coming up, you don't have to listen to them serial anymore. I know a lot of you have been listening to these in order, which I think is good. Um, you don't have to. But um, yeah, after episode 14, uh, these are going to be... You can listen to them whenever you want. Um, I'm going to keep getting suggestions from our guests. Um, Maybe we'll try and get something else out of them um, if the suggestions run dry. If you have questions that you want answered by our guests, um, send them in to me. Um, Again, ourfamousfriends at gmail.com or message me at howcomepodcast on Instagram. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, In the spirit of self-love, I'm going to ask myself, Remy, did you finish? Um, not yet. Uh, I still want to ask you guys, if you like us, please rate us and review us on iTunes. I get so many messages, but for some reason, like, you guys aren't rating and reviewing as much as I would love. Um, it's okay. You can rectify it now. But yeah, write, write us a nice review. Um, so many of you have written to me being like, I came because of this podcast. Write that on the review. We want to help more people. Um, okay, Remy, are you finished? Oh, also, we launched our Patreon account. Amazing! So go to patreon.com um, backslash how come if you want to get extra podcast extra videos we're gonna make so much content i'm gonna be the content queen um yeah uh so go to patreon if you want to hear and see more from me okay remy are you finished now yes i am finished now thank you remy for waiting until i was finally finished you are so welcome um and thank you guys for listening again uh and we'll see you on sunday next time on how come it's not you it's me I try so hard to finish honestly They say you'll know When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just. Marvel section. Marvel section. This is the Marvel section. Again, those are just me singing in a bunch of different voices. Um, I forgot to tell you about all of the assignments for the different episodes, which was kind of part of the point to this summary. Episode 7, I said, was to use the shock rub, like put it inside while using the womanizer. That was great. Episode 8, Polly recommended people to use lube. I'd already used lube, so I didn't feel the need to like tell you about my experience, but I, I support lube. Lube is great. Um, episode 9, Dan said, do what feels good. Um, that's a good thing to do. Uh, and Mark said, put something up your butt. I think we need to get more instruction soon about that. Uh, episode 10 was have sex and speak French during, uh, I had sex and spoke French during, it didn't work out that time, 
Uh, but yeah, I said I had an orgasm otherwise. It was not, in fact, from a man sucking on a clit. It was just more light clit action. Um, a lot of people have been asking if the toy I use is suction, like, like clamps down. No, it's all air, so it's like there's basically no touching. I don't know if a man or a woman, anyone could replicate it with their mouth. Uh, we'll see, but yeah, not yet. Episode 11 was the Jewish episode. I did not get any uh, assignments from that. I, I just totally forgot. I didn't get any assignments from them either. Um, I don't know. If you want to try fucking someone with a strap on, that seems like a thing. Uh, episode 13 was Ian and Jess. I don't believe I got an assignment from them either. Uh, episode 14 was with Yaz and D. And we decided that the assignment should be to give somebody body worship. Uh, give them compliments while you're having sex with them. That's a nice thing to do. Okay. This has been the Marvel section. Marvel section. It's the Marvel section. Bye-bye.